Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and by now you've probably already seen a whole bunch of videos on the new Note 10 Plus, but I want to give you a bit of an extended hands-on because most of those are just talking about specs and just initial thoughts. I've actually been using this now for the past couple of days, taking it out and about in New York City where I am at the moment, which is why I'm filming this in my hotel room. But I have to say my first impressions from using this now for a little bit is that while it is a beautiful phone and really powerful, I love the cameras and it's all singing, all dancing, it's a bit underwhelming. It's sort of like, it fundamentally feels the same as the S10 Plus. I mean, it's still a 60 hertz screen. We do have now double the RAM and a slightly faster processor, but you don't really see any of that, notice any of that in everyday performance. And also obviously the lack of the three and a half mil headphone jack, that's pissed off a lot of people. The most obvious change then is this new design and versus the Note 9, Samsung have really trimmed those bezels right back. And of course now we have this little circle Infinity O hole punch in the top middle. Now, personally, I actually prefer the S10 Plus's layout or the S10 where you had the uh, corner hole punch because then if you're watching a video or playing a game, you could hold it in such a way that your sort of thumb or your hand covered it anyway. I do actually like this new Aura color on the back, which basically just takes on the form of whatever it's reflecting. So you can have a, uh, let's see, you can have a light blue phone, you can have an orange phone. When it hits the light just right, you get kind of like a rainbow effect, and I like it. If you prefer, there are gonna be traditional black and white ones and things like that, but it is an absolute fingerprint magnet. I've been wiping this against my sleeve all day as I've been trying to film it, so that's something to bear in mind. So the first time you actually pick up the Note 10 Plus, you do feel that this is a big phone. Footprint wise, it's actually not really any bigger at all than the Note 9, but because we've got this beautiful, huge 6.8 inch screen, it does feel big. Now, the curved edges to the screen do help make it feel more comfortable in the hand, but I have found that sometimes as I'm holding it because I need a good grip and I'm reaching my thumb across, that my palm touches the screen and then it doesn't actually activate or do anything or register my finger as you can see there actually. There are a few other design tweaks as well. Firstly, in terms of the button placement, there's nothing at all on the right hand side. It's completely flat and there's just two buttons on the left, the power and the volume rocker. Now firstly, they are actually quite high up. I mean, the volume rocker is nearly at the top of the phone and this is a big phone. So if you're using it right handed, it's basically impossible to reach, so that's not ideal. But you'll also notice there's no longer a Bixby button. It's not gone, you still get Bixby on the phone and actually by holding the power button down, it brings up the Bixby home screen and voice activation. So actually to turn the phone off, you have to hold the power and the volume down. A couple of other cool features that not a lot of people are talking about is the fact that we now get an ultrasonic fingerprint reader under the screen. That's the better kind versus the optical fingerprint readers. And it is nice and fast. It's quite a small area, but it does work well. But even better is the Face Unlock 2.0. And I love it. It's really fast. You can uh, enable the setting where it takes you straight to the home screen so you don't have to swipe up from the lock screen. And actually, I have to say, it's one of my favorite features of the Note 10 Plus. So aside from the refresh design, the big upgrades this year are a bigger battery, faster charging, we've got a slightly improved S Pen with these fancy air gestures, which I can show you now that actually, if you just hold the uh, S Pen power button and you can actually like swipe between different camera modes, you can like go between the selfie camera like that. So I'm just sort of doing these air gestures. So it does work and in some apps you can do a fancy clockwise thing, it does stuff. I don't know, I mean, it kind of feels cool when you're doing some stuff, but more often than not, I just get this little, you can't use S Pen gestures in this app. So they have opened up an SDK, so developers can actually optimize and uh, design their apps around this, which will be cool. So maybe in the future, we'll see some better functionality. But for now, I think these air gestures are a bit of a gimmick. But I have to say, I do still really like the S Pen. And whenever I come back to using a Note phone, I'm surprised how much I use it. Mainly just when the screen is off, I can just pull it out and then start writing some notes here. So in terms of speed and performance, it doesn't really feel any different to the S10 Plus, to be honest. We do now have 12 gigs of RAM, double the RAM, so that should help maybe if you're using a screen view or decks or doing more intensive side-by-side -side split screen stuff. And it has got that new seven nanometer Exynos processor, the 9825, which is a slightly overclocked version, which is interesting because we've got this newer Exynos processor, but in the US variant of the Note 10 Plus, you still have the standard Snapdragon 855, you don't get the plus, so that's a bit weird. 
But having said that, one of the best new features is this camera setup. So this is basically identical to the setup you get on the S10 Plus 5G. We've got the same main lens, ultra wide telephoto, and also this time of flight sensor, which helps with augmented reality and also gives you better depth and also live focus video. You can actually do it on the rear and the front selfie camera, but there's issues around edge detection and it can look quite fake. Just have a look at this. So we've got live focus, the new live focus feature on the Note 10 Plus. We should be seeing a bit of a more blurry background, that bokeh effect, which should make me pop out the scene a bit more on the Samsung, but some people think it looks a bit fake. So this is live focus, let me compare it. So this is with live focus, and then without live focus, and you can see now everything is a lot sharper in the back, you've lost all that sort of nice blurry bokeh effect. I am working on a couple of camera comparisons at the moment. I wish I could show you some side-by-sides right now, but I'm not allowed to. So while there may not be that much new with the camera, it is still one of the best out there. It's not the best, I'd say that's probably the Pixel, then maybe the uh, iPhone XS, Huawei P30 Pro, and then this, and then the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's still really good, especially in the daytime. This handles dynamic range really well. I also love the portrait shots you can get out of it. Even though I have been using this for a couple of days, I'm still not quite ready to give a final judgment on the battery life. We now get a 4300 milliamp hour cell in here, that's up from 4000 on the Note 9. It is pretty good and a day and a half should be about right. I also unfortunately don't have the new super fast charger because one of the features of this is you get 45 watt charging, which is crazy fast, but I haven't been given one of the plugs to actually test that with. So again, I'll look at that in a full review. So I've been waffling on for far too long. So let me just sum up my 48 hours with the Note 10 Plus. It's a fantastic phone, but it is very, very expensive. And I don't know why you'd actually go for the standard Note 10 over say the S10 Plus. I mean, even the standard Note 10 starts at about 950 pounds. It's super expensive. And while there are, as I say, loads of nice little incremental upgrades all around, it's not fundamentally different. But I have only been using it for a couple of days and there's loads more things I wanna test out, including the fast charging, I wanna put the camera through its paces, uh, Samsung's DeX and also the screen share, there's loads of stuff. So do make sure you stay tuned and hit that subscribe button for my full review and camera comparisons and battery tests and all that good stuff coming really soon. But hopefully you found this useful. It's just a bit of an extended hands-on and I'd love to hear what you make of the Note 10 Plus in the comments below and whether you're considering buying it. And if so, would you go for the standard Note 10, the Note 10 Plus or the Note 10 Plus 5G? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.